Oh, we're painting something. What? Don't know, but it's something. Hey, how's it going? I'm uh, doing the live streaming thing again. Going to work on some projects. Um, this series is not the getting projects done. As um, With getting projects done, it felt a bit more like something that should be have a bit more focus to it. And with this, I think it's just going to... I'm going to leave it open to whatever I feel like working on. And for everybody else out there, yeah, I recently acquired this fun miniature right here. Uh, this is a miniature that I have wanted in my collection for many, many years. And I finally got my hands on one. This was through a private uh, deal to somebody locally who happened to have one in their collection. And I was like, what do you want for it? And so we made an arrangement and yeah, uh, it was painted. Uh, I had to uh, strip the model to uh, this fashion here. And uh, I think the model was painted with uh, enamels because I had to use something pretty aggressive to uh, get all the paint off this miniature. Uh, I had to use a lacquer thinner, uh, which uh, pretty much ate right through whatever the uh, paint was that was covering this model. So the model itself is an old pewter model. It does not look like it has any, uh, like, it, this looks like the, the white metal. A lot of the older, old, old, old citadels um, would have had way more lead in them. And um, well, I guess we can probably turn the chat off, right? Yeah, turn that off for now. I don't even know if the chat will work. Man, I had some problems trying to get this stream to even just happen. But anyway... <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to work on this guy. I want to get this guy uh, prepared for um, for painting. And uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to start working on stuff. And uh, if anybody has any kinds of questions or anything like that, feel free to ask. Uh, where are my proper shutters? It's already starting. I can't even find all my tools. There it is. There we go. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take off the tab. Now the tab itself has, I, well, I took a picture earlier and posted it on the YouTubes. It says Tin Boy on one side and then it has GW90 on the other. So yeah, if anybody was wondering how old this miniature is, 1990 is when these model, well, when, when this particular model hit the shelves. But yeah, also there is some, uh, you know, mold lines, stuff like that, that I want to clean up that look like they probably weren't touched. So yeah, I can see like a couple on the legs here, things like that. Yeah, just some general stuff. I just want to clean up this model before I paint it. And I do want to paint it in the uh, color scheme of the Sam Han. That's the color scheme I'm going to go with this guy. For the gun, though, I'm not sure how I really want to go about painting the gun because, you know, the gun is kind of an orky look to it. It's not very Eldari. But, you know, the, the idea being that the orcs would imitate what they were seeing. And so if they were encountering a lot of Samhan, right, the gun could be white, could be black, you know, who knows, right? But the armor is going to prob predominantly be red and the helmet is going to be all white. So pretty straightforward, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm the, the power fist it almost looks like there's enough room to, uh, to paint a design there or something. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll just see. But, uh, I also don't want it to look too clean. And I also want to, uh, take this a little bit more, a little bit more old school. Um, I recently went to Adepticon and through a really fantastic deal, I had gotten my hands on Code to Arms paint. And so I'm thinking, I'm gonna paint this guy, this old school model, using old school paints and possibly paint techniques. So anyway, I'm removing this tab because I'm gonna rebase this guy. I'm gonna put him on a base. And uh, yeah, that's the plan anyway. So there, he's free of the 
tab. And so what I'll do is I'll just uh, pin his feet. And I'll just put some pins in there and that way he can be sat into a base. And yeah, I think you all get it, right? Okay, where are my files? I really need to clean up my area. <laughs> it, ha it has been a minute since I uh, have gotten any hobbying, any miniatures, anything like that done. It's been a while. So this is uh, this is a uh, return to form, as it were. Actually, I don't even know if anybody's talking here. I got oh, I didn't even pop the chat out. Oops. Oh, Kim, there he is. On my way to bed, just popped in to say hello. It's almost 2.30 here, and I got stuff early tomorrow. Have a great evening over there. See you later, Kim. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hey. Oh no. I'm gonna pop the chat out. Pop the chat out. There we go. Optimized. Okay. There we go. So thanks, Kim, for stopping by, and uh, we'll check you later, buddy. All right. Uh, so I got some old school files here. These are just regular metal files, and these are just good for working on uh, old school pewter. I'm going to have a whole bunch of pewter dust all over my table, probably. And yeah, so hopefully uh, by the end of this stream, we will have primer, possibly even a base coat down. I know I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but... Smooth, nice and smooth. Knocking some of the, the flakies out. You know, there is a certain amount of charm to working on old pewter models. Now, I say old pewter because, I mean, well, a lot of us who are, you know, in the hobby and do a lot of Warhammer... I mean, it's been a while that many Warhammer hobbyists will have uh, worked on pewter. Whereas, you know, anybody who's playing, you know, uh, Infinity or what have you. Yeah, I mean, they're going to be, they're still going to be working in pewter. At least I'm pretty sure it's still pewter, right? Uh, Disco, hello, hello, Disco. Kim, I'll rewatch the stream tomorrow. See ya. Later, dude. Russ Sandbags, love the stream. What would uh, be your dream Eldar model to be introduced in a new codex? Oh. I, okay, dream dream model. Jeez, there's so many. There's so many. Uh, I was just having this conversation with somebody at uh, at Max Aggression just the other day, just yesterday, and I uh, I would love to see in the Eldar range. Okay, so here, okay, this is a good, this is a bit of a long one. Space Marines have rhinos. The rhino chassis is a very versatile chassis. The Eldari have the Falcon. The Falcon is a very versatile chassis, right? But to my way of thinking, they are similar. The Falcon and the Rhino are similar chassis, right? <laughs> you know, similar durability, say similar. They're just very similar. I would like to see a tank come out for Eldari that was more like the Land Raider equivalent in the army. So something that was a bit bigger, but not like a scorpion, because a scorpion is more like the Eldari Bane Blade, as it were, right? Now the Lynx is kind of the in between, and I think a tabletop plastic version of the Lynx or something adjacent to the Lynx, like that chassis, I think would be really, really cool. Something that was kind of a heavy assault wave serpent type of vehicle or... You know, like even the Land Raider has many variants. So even this chassis for the Eldari could be of a similar thing, right? Or even just bring the uh, Scorpion in as a plastic kit. Bane Blade used to be resin. Then it made the transition into plastic. Why not Eldari, right? So, yeah, uh, that's one thing I would like to see brought into the into the universe for the Eldari. 
Cult of the Prophets. Hi, Chris. Hope all is well. Hi. Uh, I think everything is well. Pretty well. As well as it can be, I suppose. Given the state of the world. Right there. <laughs> it's one of them old tabs. Right there, you can see this little nub. Anybody can see that little nub right there, yeah. You used to get these little nubs all the time on the pewter models. It was like um, where the two halves, and then sometimes you get this little squirt of pewter come out, and it'd be like these little nubs. And yeah, you'd get these little nubs come popping out, and that's where, you know, like the two halves of the mold would meet, and you get the little squirt out. Sometimes it'd be part of the flash, you know, like you get the little, is that a piece of flash right there? <laughs> this elbow joint looks like a sponge. It's got like a bunch of dimples and stuff in it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> his elbow is a sponge apparently but yeah so this is gonna be fun i'm gonna have fun this is this is a project of love um, there's no reason to you know to think that i'm gonna use this on the tabletop or anything like that i'm not gonna paint it to a super high standard i'm probably just gonna paint it up to oh i don't know like a a, f a fair tabletop. I mean, I might go a little bit more further, but it all depends. It all depends if I'm really feeling it. I mean, I want it done. and I want it part of my collection as far as, you know, sitting on my shelf with all my other uh, <laughs> oddities. Other oddities on my shelf. Like my, you know, McFarlane Space Marine. All the other little projects I've gotten completed. Over the last couple of years, there we go. Just got the little nub taken care of. Just clean that up a little bit more. And yeah. <laughs> e platypus unum. Wow, long time no stream. Yeah, it's been a bit. I've been busy, uh, real life busy, and you know, just haven't had really a lot of time. And today just happened to be a day that I was free. Uh, I had other stuff going on this afternoon, but I had a plan to stream this afternoon. But then, you know, as things kind of, you know, keep going and, you know, you do this and that. And, you, oh, wait, we got to take care of this. We got to take care of that. And so, you know, it uh, falls to the uh, the wayside. And so you, know, you get to it when you can. Yeah. This model, though, is like I never owned this model when it was originally out way back in the day. This model is just one of those models, those oddities that I wanted way back when. I used to uh, collect orcs in Rogue Trader, as well as Chaos and Squats and Space Marines, Eldari, Eldar. And uh, yeah, and I always wanted one, just never got around to getting one, you know? Uh, they're just really, really fun. Uh, I would like to find the Space Marine and the Squat. Because the Squat, now that Vo Leagues of Votan are a thing and Squats are back, well, he, these little guys become relevant again. In you know, For, for those of us who enjoy the, the, that aspect, that classic aspect of them. Anyway. Yeah. Actually, a fair amount of cleaning up i got to do. Not bad. I don't care. It takes me back. Gets me in the mood to uh, to take care of this because yeah, this is not ribbons. Yeah, so I'm thinking with this color scheme for this guy, I want to do it like he's a Sam Han. So the orcs have been you know fighting Sam Han, and they're saying, you know what, we need some robots with uh, the power of Sam Han behind them. That's, that's why that's why the uh, orcs have this little guy. Steal some of that power. Do, 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 do. Where the hell am I? Tyler Voris. Looking forward to this. Love old models. Yes, me too. I do too. I, I concur. Another old model I have on my desk that I do, that I recently, wanted, I recently cleaned up and have intentions of painting up is this little feller. I have this little guy. I, cl I cleaned him up and yeah, I found him in my bits box and I was like, Hey, look at this guy. I remember this guy. This guy was so much fun. And I like that, you know, he's, he's got the little microphone and everything like that. 
And it'd be kind of hilarious, you know, to, to do something kind of fun, you know, with this guy. What? I don't know, but something. This guy here? Yeah, this guy's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some love into this guy because he's just such an iconic little bit of history as far as, you know, Warhammer is concerned. You know? uh, called the Prophets. Cool model. Yes, I know. I love it. Sophie, there she is. Are you going retro color scheme too? Well, 30 year old color scheme. Um, well, like, yeah, like I said, he's going to get painted like a Samhan. So his body is going to be mostly red. His helmet's going to be uh, a white. His gun, I'm not sure. The casing, I think I will do white and then do like the metal bits and, you know, stuff like that. But I also am thinking that because I kind of wanted to look a little orky, I think I'm going to have mix, uh, mixed matched uh, reds like reds that are pushing towards, you know, yellows or oranges, just off, you know, like dark, bright, saturated, desaturated, not all of that, but I'm going to try and play with some, I'm thinking like three. So like when you're making up a color scheme and you know, you, you, you kind of want to have a whole riot of color, you're best not to just go with 20 colors on the model because then it's just going to look muddy, messy and everything like that. You're better off going again with the rule of three, right? So typically on a miniature, we go like uh, three colors, right? We go a big primary, a secondary, and a spot color. With this guy, for the red, I think I want to just go with three different iterations of red. So a dark red, a mid-tone red, and a um, light red. So I'm thinking that uh, for big areas, I think I'll go with the mid-tone. Some of the smaller areas, I'll go with the, you know, the darker red. And some of the other areas, I'll go with the lighter red. And just kind of mix match it so it looks kind of like you know that he was cobbled together from different components and yeah so it doesn't look like you know they assembled him and then just you know slapped the coat of paint on him kind of thing i don't want i don't want to go that route i mean it could it could go that route but nah, i don't think so i'd rather uh I'd rather it look kind of chaotic in that sense that you know he's a riot of, of different shades like the orc boy was doing his best to you know keep kind of a cohesive kind of look Sure, orcs don't really care about that, but you know, I care about it. <laughs> it's kind of my thing. But, you know. I'm trying to think of what one. What was the last pewter model I was working on? Like legit working on. I cannot think of one. Is there anything on my desk? Oh, everything's plastic nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't think I've worked on a pewter model in like ages, ages, man, ages. Not a, not ages. Ages. Not to be confused with super sugar crisp. The mold lines are actually pretty good on this model. Considering, like, back in the day, it was not uncommon to get miniatures where, like, man, like, the quality control back in the day was not you know, up to par like it is today. Like you used to get, you used to get some models, some pewter models where the seam line would run through the middle of a face. And then the face, because the way the mold, the mold processing works, the two halves might deviate a bit. And so you'd have the face slightly askew. And so like an eyeball will be up here and another eyeball will be up here kind of thing. Right? Yeah. That, that kind of thing happened all the time with pewter miniatures all the time and you just kind of have to make your peace with it because you know, what else were you going to do like all you can do is just assemble the model and you know, put it together or fix it yourself right for those of us out there who were really sticklers for the details and hobbying and having really good looking miniatures yeah they would have um, they would have just sculpted the details back on or 
re-sculpt the face. Hell, sometimes you probably get some that were, um, if the face was really messed up, just lop the face off and put a new face on or sculpt a new face and all, all this kind of work, right? Especially for anybody who was, um, you know, had eyeballs and ambitions for like golden demons. I'm still just looking. Looking, looking, looking. Yeah, see, like, there's one thing here I'm not too crazy about. I don't know how well that's going to show up. But, like, right in this area of his fingers. Yeah, you can see, like, it's kind of molded together and it, it combines into his leg. That kind of thing I'm not crazy about. Because, again, this thing was a single cast, right? Like, this was just sculpted as one thing. They cast it and that was it and that's what you got right it wasn't like you could assemble this or you know attach anything or you know what i mean like it's not like modern models today you know or even like you know modern like resin miniatures i mean like you know they come in sub assemblies and you know, you can prepare them that way anyway oh this is fun i'm having fun i'm having fun uh, Sophie, thinking your metallic reds, the Turbo Dork ones, would be interesting? I could go Turbo Dork reds. Yes, I could. Like, like metallic red on the body, a flat white on the head, and maybe a flat white on the gun casing. That's possible. That's possible. I mean, I, I'm not really going to know until I, you know, start getting paint onto the, the actual miniature here. But yeah. where it needs to be filed down i'm kind of surprised that uh, this model is, is in the great condition it is sounds like it's sat in a box for ages no love no love he's getting no love but that's okay because now he's with me he's gonna get all the love that sounds weird That's the thing about cleaning cleaning miniatures, especially like these old pewter miniatures. Once you find a spot and you go, oh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll clean that up, we'll get that. And then you see another area and it's like, oh, no, that's gotta get cleaned up. Oh, no, that's gotta get cleaned up. <laughs> sure, it's gonna sweep some of this debris out of here. Then once we pin it, probably uh give it a quick wash of alcohol just to knock the oils off just because you know i'm sitting here handling this thing a lot <clears throat> probably what we'll do what sort of base should i do what size of base actually because i mean this model most likely went on a 25 mil base but i don't want to put them on a 25 mil i think a 32 mil base would 32 around here? I'm sure I have one. I'm sure I do. There, there we go. I got one. Right here. Right here. I think it's 32. <laughs> yeah, it's a 32. I'm pretty sure this is 32. This is a space marine. Where's the space marine? Space marine? Yeah, it's a 32. Same size. Oh yeah, 32 is perfect size for this guy. Look at that. That's perfect. His little toesies stick off the edge, but that's fine. That is fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think that's going to be cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll probably uh, layer up something. Just give him a little more elevation. You know, make his base a little bit more interesting. Yeah. That's what we'll do. I uh, think, I think, I think. Uh, where the hell's my files? Yeah. So is it, what is everybody else working on right now? Working on anything fun? Getting projects done, hopefully? Maybe? 
or just chilling out. Fine too. You're allowed to chill out. You don't always have to be doing something. You can just be sitting here spacing out, staring at the ceiling. Yeah, I'm, I'm still very impressed with how well this, this casting is. Like, the, the mold lines are very, very minimal. Like it was a good cast. Like as, as far as castings go, like, realistically, like, it's not bad at all. Like, there was no, there was no, ca like, bad deviation divots, steps, or anything like that on the model. And, like, even just the little seam lines and stuff like that are very, very minimal. This model was not cleaned. Um... They, they drilled the barrel though so that's you know that's a plus <laughs> a little off center but that's okay it's an orc gun right <laughs> it's an orc gun so you know the orcs aren't going to be precise it's not like you know they're out there with calipers and everything like that i don't even know if orcs have calipers they don't even know what a caliper is <laughs> do i even know for that man Sorry, I just move it around a lot in the light and just to see, you know, if I can see where the little seam lines are going. Move it in the light and try and find that little that little step. Uh patent pending. Woo! Woohoo! Sophie! Wasn't it more lead-based paint 30 years ago? And did you need uh did you need to need a certain pri uh, primer for pewter? Oh, excuse me. No. Um, most of the primers, like GW's primer, it's pretty much the same formulation. I'm sure it's different, but it the way it goes on, the way it smells, the way it flies through the air, the way it, it all of the way it handles is very reminiscent to how it, it used to work way back in the day. And I mean, you know, a lot of people will shit on Games Workshop primer, but I mean, I, I like Games Workshop primer. For rattle can stuff, I mean, it's it's good stuff. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, there are cheaper alternatives, sure, but you know, for what it is, it does the job well. Uh, side seam. So yeah, I just felt like firing up the camera. Uh, this project here, I was really, really excited to get started on. And so I figured, you know what? I might as well turn the cameras on and, um, you know, see what's shaking, <laughs> as it were. So I don't know if this little series of painting something will um, be a regular daily or weekly kind of thing. I would like to be weekly, but don't quote me on that. I'd, you know, I'd rather be kind of a set schedule kind of thing, but the way my schedule works these days, it's really hard to plan around stuff. So yeah, that's why I'm not, I'm, that, that's why I sound really kind of non-committal about it all because it's just hard to, Set aside, blocked out. As it were. I can't tell if that's supposed to be a rivet or if that's like one of them little flash nubs. I'll say it's a flash nub.
any of you old school Warhammer enthusiasts, any of you miss pewter miniatures? And if so, what do you do? And if not, why not? Sure, there's plenty of you out there who are like, I don't care for metal miniatures at all. And then some of you are out there probably like, um, metal miniatures were the peak of miniatures. <laughs> the peak of gaming was was metal miniatures. I don't know if I'm in that camp. It was the peak. I think we're in the peak. Currently. Smooth, fast and smooth. Perfect. <clears throat> um, where are we? I don't even know where the hell we are. Call the prophet, uh, prophets. Just chilling, just chilling. Cool. Patent pending. Whoa, looks nice. So far, I mean, we haven't gotten into the the real the real work yet. We're just cleaning. I mean, the cleaning. Now, mind you, I mean, like many people, when you are talking about doing a good paint job on a miniature, good preparation is how you're going to get there, right? Like, you gotta take the time to prepare your model if you're gonna take your time and, you know, prepare a good paint job. Good prep precedes good painting. Sophie, working on Bretonia for Old World here. Oh, nice. Now, are, are your Bretonians of one house or are you doing like, you know, every night is, uh, different uh, heraldry i'm i'm of the mindset that i like the bretonians all different heraldries but you know that's also really time consuming as far as painting is concerned if you're in no rush to get your army done well then yeah you might as well. <laughs> it's kind of tempting now that I'm thinking about it. Sophie, you mentioned the, the metallics. Now I'm thinking, what if I painted it chrome and then put the red on top of it? Uh, fuck. <laughs> Y'all dang it, Sophie. I had an idea in my brain already, and I was like, I'm going to just do it flat colors. I, well, because I was going to do it old school. You know what? I, no, because I was going to do coat to arm paints. So yeah, that's that's what I, that was the plan anyway. I was going to use the old school paints to do it an old school miniature, right? <laughs> but now you've you've confuddled my thoughts here. Uh, e platypus unum finishing a, gi a GW giant I've sat uh, since maybe 2018. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Get, yeah. Get it done. Get it done. Get her done. Rust sandbags. Do you ever play in tournaments nowadays? Uh, not really. I mean, I have in the past, uh, quite a bit, all the way up to um, the Ard Boys. Really, that was yeah, it was Ard Boys, and um, yeah, really. I mean, like 
last tournament was probably 8th edition, I think, that I took part in. But I played a game of 10th edition. I've had two games, two or three games of 10th edition so far. So, But I'm not ready for any kind of tournament playing 10th edition. I know it's not like, you know, you have to like, you know, it's not like you got to go through like a rocky montage of, you know, preparing for this thing. But you know, you probably want it. <laughs> you might want it. Tricky thing about doing a, a, a flat space like that is trying to keep your file centered and straight and not bumping into other detail. You can see that seam line right there on the back of the clip or the magazine. That file's a little bit big. You know, I'll switch this. I have this other triangular file. I'll switch the flat sides on. And keep this straight like this. Not to push hard. Better off to maintain control. You're better off just pushing the file in one direction. For anybody out there who's never really worked on pewter miniatures before, for everybody else out there who who works, who's still working on pewter miniatures, yeah, they're like, yeah, Chris, I knew. Also try not to like do it too uh too perfectly. Oi, jeez Louise. Alex Tucker, subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my magazine's gone. Oh, it's gone. Shit. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. See on the top of the magazine there's a little seam line. In fact, we can we can use a big file for that one, right? We can use this big one. But usually, all I do is I just sit it flat to the surface, and then just not too aggressive. Try not to go too back and forth initially. Just applying force in that. Who that is? I remember. I can't remember which white dwarf it was. There was a white dwarf article. And there was a pewter miniature. I can't remember what model it was. It was one of the like the knights for the Empire or something like that. And the painter had cleaned the pewter model and polished the pewter to a you know a luster and then started painting the miniature. And I thought that was really, really interesting. That was a really interesting way of going for, you know, this metallic shine with a minimal amount of effort. I can't remember which White Dwarf it is. If anybody remembers what White Dwarf that was, it's, it's an old one. If anybody remembers, yeah, let me know. But yeah. I was always inspired by that one. Like, you know, shining the metal to achieve your effect. I always thought that was really interesting. Creative thinking, right? This one has got the inside curvature. I don't know. Use the flat, uh, the rounded one. Is an inside curvature right on the inside of the magazine there? And using a flat file is just going to end up gouging little trails inside here. So I'm going to use my little round file.
Yeah, so when I'm initially pulling material out and trying to knock that surface down, usually it's, you know, applying a bit of pressure and then pushing in one direction. But once I'm to that point where like the, the mold line's gone and everything like that, then that's when I'll kind of just go back and forth and I'll just smooth out and try and rough out some of the file marks. Little movements. Move some material around. Shiny the thing gets, eh? Um, oh, excuse me. Patent pending. I appreciate you turning the cam on. Yeah, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. It's been a bit. I can't even remember the last time I live streamed. When was the last live stream? Oh, I guess when I was doing like the reveals and stuff like that, right? So when I was doing the VW reveals, hanging out. Yeah. How to puss. Oh, no. Sophie, definitely weekly. We all miss the getting projects done when you used to stream those. Yeah, I know. And with the getting projects done, initially that was more really for myself just to keep up with all my projects. And I mean, like on my desk, well, I mean, some of you I've shown what my desk looks like. It has not changed since the last time I I've updated people on what my desk going on. Like I was working on this tutorial for the new crew, uh, these, uh, crew rampagers and yeah, I haven't even finished it. Uh, it's, it's, this, it's filmed up to this point, but I have not come back to this. And this was before Adepticon. This that's what a month ago. I haven't even finished that one. Man, I still have my 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 avatar. I want to get finished. I haven't finished this guy yet. But I've got projects, people. I've got projects. <laughs> I know. You don't have to tell me. I know. Platypus unum, I miss the weight of, of pewter. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that's that was probably one of the biggest things too. Uh, a lot of gamers I know that prefer pewter. Yeah, they they like the weight on the miniature, and I know like there's lots of gamers out there with their metal miniatures and the plastic. They would, um, you know, put like uh, pennies or coins or whatever washers uh, in the uh, bases so that the whole model would have more weight and, you know, wouldn't be tipping over. Because like if you had like a tall metal model and the base was really light, the model would just fall over all the time, especially if you had it on an angle, like on a hill or stairs or something like that. It would constantly be falling over. Whereas when you put a washer in here and it counteracts that balance of the miniature, yeah, it was it was solid and it would have some good, you know, some good weight to it, you know. <laughs> anyway, file to show you the <laughs> crazy orc guns like this gun doesn't even make sense like what is going on with this gun i don't even understand what it is <laughs> i i don't understand it it's it's craziness it's craziness
fudge. It looks really off center, but I wonder if I can shape the image of it. Yeah, I know I'm 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 fine tuning an orc model. Things are a little off. That's part of the charm of orcs. <laughs> so basically, I'm killing some of the charm, I think is what I'm saying here. <laughs> uh, Sophie, I sort of prefer plastic to pewter as they're better for conversion. And though I have um, a couple of old pewter miniatures. Yeah, I, I like pewter miniatures, but I don't miss converting them. I really don't miss working on them. Although I am having a bit of you know, nostalgia right now, but yeah, I'm uh, not, I'm not making that leap back to pewter or anything like that. I'm not like, you know, pewter was the best. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, it depends on what mood I'm in. I suppose I'll, I could agree to that, but for the most part though, no, not really. <laughs> Sophie doing one unit each of four houses. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you have a, like a mix of colors in your army. That's cool. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Like every unit is a, of a house. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Russ Sandbags, you should do a challenge where you only paint a model using dollar store craft paints. I have considered it. I've considered it. Um, I don't know if I've ever demonstrated it uh, using like kind of um, lower quality paints. What gets deemed lower quality paints? Yeah. I probably should, because I do talk about it often. That it is not the paint that makes for excellent painting. It's 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 the painter. It's your experience. It's what you bring, right? The tool doesn't make the carpenter. Mechanic makes the mechanic. Does that make sense? For whatever reason, I want this elbow to be like a perfect little sphere on his arm. <laughs> don't know why. Don't why. Don't know why I do the things that I do. Yeah, I like sometimes it's, it's moments like this where it's like, yeah, I do miss the old days of you know working on my miniatures. And, you know, I was playing with friends and stuff like that. And, yeah, just getting lost in a miniature. <laughs> this guy's so much fun. <laughs> Tin boys, Tin boys ought to make a comeback in Orcs Army. What would, what would it take to get Tin Boys back into Warhammer 40,000? What would it take? What would it take? Knocking down the mood line. Okay, so for the base, what do you guys think? I think we should just go with something like a straight up 
cork or do you think we should go with some like get some gw terrain bit or something like a tank or something i don't know you know what i have some orky stuff Once I'm done cleaning here. Yeah, I'm sp <laughs> this is what I really didn't want to do, but I'm spending a lot of time here. Didn't really expect to be cleaning this so much. And initially when I picked it up, Really, really am pleased with how you know minimal this thing was going to be as far as you know cleaning it up. It's another one you got to be careful of. Metal files on these old miniatures like this. You're filing a side and you're not paying attention, and you end up filing like another detail. So like I was filing, say, this side of his head. And I'd end up filing that ear off, right? Like as I'm working, I'd end up filing that. So that's why you got to be careful when you're working with these metal miniatures and using these things. Just in, in it, especially like some of these like um, triangular ones that have, you know, it's like this is a triangular one, and you be filing one side, and then that little corner is digging down into an area, and you're just like, oh, I need some cleaning up on this. You just end up making your life dip more difficult, and you're just going to end up hating your hobby and happy and you know, why would you want to do that right why on earth would you want to why why i thought it was a little piece of something there was a piece of paint dried still dried up from when i stripped this all right i think i'm done cleaning it next is to drill some little holes there yeah i'll probably do two pins i think we'll do two pins just to make sure this oh he stands up nicely anyway okay. you guys can see he stands on his base just fine see he stands <laughs> Hello. Anyway, all right. The tab. We're gonna check the tab. We don't need that anymore. Files. We can probably put our files away. We don't need those. We're gonna need the cutters for a second. Is my drill bit. Drills. Pull one from the GW drill bit. Um, but I'm bum 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 bum. Russ, I no, I already read that one, right? Yeah. Sophie, are you still working on Abaddon? I've got half finished projects of wargaming scale models dating back a couple years. No, I have not finished my Abaddon. My Abaddon is still sitting on my new pile. Yeah, and I got this guy back when he uh, he first came out. Yeah, that's his cloak, obviously. It's not all of that. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Uh, so, anyway, yeah. Just doing some, some work on there. I haven't touched this in a while. Where's the rest of these? <laughs> he was sitting on my shelf. Where the hell is he? Did I get rid of him? Yeah. He's around somewhere. Probably looking right at him, and I don't see him. Rolling over boxes. Oh, Abaddon, Abaddon, where is my Abaddon? Holy shit, where is he? Ah, there he is. 
Yeah, so this is the state of my Abaddon. Not glued to the base. Current state of my Abaddon. Metallic sword and knives. On my Instagram, you can see some close-ups of the work. Not happy with the base. I think I might swap out the base. I might do a custom base for it. I was actually, don't quote me on this, but I was actually toying around with the idea of maybe doing a couple uh, pieces for competition this year. I was, I was toying with the idea. But don't quote me on that. This is the point. This is the point. Is that spanners on this one? Oh, that's the same. Why are they both the same size? Oh, that's just a hair bigger. All right, screw it. We'll do. We'll use it. Screw it. Um, Fire Drake 18. What you painting? Stuff? <laughs> painting stuff is tight. That made me lull. Okay. I usually like to drill into myself just to check to see if the if the got the bit in straight. All right. Next, we need some pinning material. What are we going to use for pinning? Uh, we'll go with the tried and true. Clip, I guess. I have brass rod around somewhere. But... <laughs> All my shit is. <laughs> I need a file cabinet. <laughs> Where's my paper clips? Holy shit! Did somebody take my paper? Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are about to hear me lose my shit. Start, yell start yelling at my family. Where's my pepper clubs? <laughs> That's awful, I know. <laughs> Don't worry, I got little tools for all sorts of stuff. Time we had anyway. I don't even know how long we've been how long we've been doing this. We've been doing this seven minutes. Oh, <laughs> we've only been doing this seven minutes. Oh, holy shit! It's almost an hour already. Man, it's already after nine. Damn. Damn. Quit screwing around. And get some work done here. Uh, patent pending. Ab looking clean. Looking clean? Oh, <laughs> Abaddon looking clean. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I I would like to, I would like to get Abaddon done for because I initially started painting Abaddon, like just taking my time and you know like I really wasn't keeping track of hours, how long I was painting, stuff like that. And um, yeah, I was thinking, you know what, screw it. I mean, if I get them done this year, then maybe I'll enter them into some painting competition, or I don't know, Golden Demon, whatever. Right? Is Crystal Brush still a thing? I don't even know. Uh, I probably don't need to that much, I guess, eh? Yeah, we only need that much. Oh, shit, do I have a super glue? I do. My trusty, rusty super glue. This is the super glue I've been using lately. Zappa Gap. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a good one because it doesn't shrink when it... Uh, 
That's why I like Zappa Gap. Is that you can use it for gap filling, right? Um, Fire drink. Swords and knives are tight. LOLing is tight. <laughs> Never pinned anything before. You Never pinned before? No? Well, I mean, pewter models and resin miniatures. I mean, like you can see like this resin miniature here. Oftentimes with Forge World, they'll, they'll key it like they do with the plastic kits. But you can see here, like I pinned his foot so that he goes into his base. Uh, did I pin his head? No, but I have his head attached by just a post attack, just to keep it in place, just well until I figure out what I want to do. And his base, Lord knows where his base is. Somewhere. <laughs> Sophie, question. It might be just me, but when I'm painting something, I'll look at the miniature and I think, yeah, it's looking great, my best yet. But when I've taken a photo of it and look at the photo, it's, ew, my worst mini yet. Uh, yeah, I mean, that happens all the time. Uh, th there is two different standards, really, when you're painting miniatures, painting to the eye and painting for the camera. Painting to the eye is like you can hold the model out arm's length and look at it and it looks fantastic the blends are beautiful you know the details and it's all there and then when you look at it under a camera you can see you know some of the paint strokes or maybe the paint didn't go all the way into one little nook or you know something along those lines right and when you're painting to the camera the, mo the model will look fantastic on camera but when you see it in person it looks flat the model looks flat it looks desaturated it looks dull it looks boring at arm's length, right? Just because of the amount of transitions, colors, details, and everything like that, that the model can kind of just become kind of washed out looking to the eye. On camera, beautiful. To the eye, kind of loses something, right? So, yeah, you kind of end up with that, you know, uh, in between. And so when you are working, if your goal is to paint better and to look better and so that, you know, for yourself or your competitions or maybe you want to get into painting i would recommend when you are working on your miniatures take regular pictures not to not to you know share online but for your own um learning and your own procedure so that you can see ah i missed a spot or you know i'm i'm getting too much paint in this area or not enough or you know what i mean it it gives it's a it's a way of gauging your progress uh is basically what i'm getting at Um, but um, bum bum. Use an old blade to start a pilot hole. Here, a little bit of pressure. Blade around. Give it right in the heel. You can kind of see there. The little spot right there. Same thing over here. Try and like visualize the center where it's the thickest and the strongest. And then just now I'm using an old blade here, but you can use pretty much anything. Just you know, hell, if you even have like a set of uh, punches, yeah, just use punches. Mind you, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody use punches on miniatures. I don't know if you could hold them, if you could hold the part in your hand tight enough without yeah. wrecking anything. And, you know, get that plunger to, to punch that hole in, right? But anyway. Um, Fire Drake. The old man cursing at his family as he paints his tiny miniatures. Damn, kids losing my paper clips. <laughs> yeah, well, I was about to get mad. I was like, somebody told me, took my fucking paper clips, man. <laughs> I know, it sounds, it sounds like such a grumpy old man thing to say. Pissing me off, man. So now that we have our pilot hole, I just simply start drilling in. Now you don't really need to drill in too far. Uh, about two millimeters, I think, is enough. Just to give the paper clip enough uh, space to come out. And when you are drilling, especially for pinning, you want to try and make sure that you are holding your drill bit. Uh, even as you're working and you're turning this so that it is not moving, you don't want to be doing this kind of thing because that'll make the hole wider, right? You don't want to make the hole wider because then the pin is not going to fit properly. Paper clip and bang, 
right in there. Right? So what I'll do is I'll probably file off the end that I cut, which is this end. Yeah, it's this end. This end. I'll file that down because oftentimes when you are using metal clippers to cut metal or rod or brass or whatever, it ends up pinching the metal. And so you end up with this kind of like little peak at the top of the rod. And so you want to file that flat or at least curvature so that it sits inside the, the your, your hole better, right? You just have more contact space. I want to try and be straight as possible. At an angle, here we go. I don't know how else to describe that. I don't need to apply a lot of pressure. Just a little bit. You can see the material coming out. I have no idea how far I'm going. Really, I guess it's how much resistance I feel uh, when I'm trying to pull the, the drill bit out. It feels like a, a lot, and it feels like the drill bit's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to fall. Then, yeah, I think I've drilled far enough. <laughs> Just want to double check, make sure my pin is sitting in here properly. I actually went deeper. Maybe we'll do this one. Okay, so that's that. That's in here. Files went. I lost them. No, they're there. I said I didn't need them. That was a lie. That was a bald faced lie. <laughs> uh, Disco, I've been using Vallejo plastic putty. Not bad. Pasty residue. Lots of sanding. Yeah, I, well, I like Vallejo's. Uh, modeling putty. I like it uh, because it uses the marble dust and I think that works better. Like Vallejo's modeling putty and uh, GW's green liquid green stuff. That's like, those are two products that have similar roles and yeah, the GW one falls short as far as I'm concerned uh, because the liquid green stuff, it shrinks when it, when it cures versus the Vallejo modeling putty, it doesn't. Vallejo modeling putty is made with uh, marble dust, whereas Games Workshops is, uh, I think it's just like that that pumice that's in like, you know, the texture paint, like, you know, like the, the technical paints, like the, the basing material stuff. Yeah, it makes that smell good. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure. And I'm not there when it's when that shit's getting made. But the question is, it's clogged. It's kind of dumb. I'm sitting here squirting it with my hand under it to see if it's clogged. Tell me that's not the dumbest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, one of the tools that I like to use to clear my clogs. This little guy, but I need to clear it off because apparently some dummy didn't clean it last time he used it. Anyway, it's just a little um, sculpting pick. You get them in like you know, the, like the little sculptors tool things, you know, like the little eye pokers and shit like that. Anyway, I'm just all I'm doing is it's 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 caked in in residual uh, CA glue, so I'm just clearing some of that crap off just because I don't want it to add to the clog once I clear the bottle with this there we go there we go pretty as a picture yeah so it's one of these tools right so it's like we're sculpting you know like when they're putting like little tiny dots and stuff but I use this because this is a good diameter for like clearing 
bottles and clogs and stuff now. Then do a little turn, pull it out. It should be good. Towel. So let's grab the pin and we're going to do a little bit of glue. In fact, with CA glue, your CA glue holds better the less you use. Moment to set. Okay. Mm. No. Fire drink. That's why I take blurry photos. The truth truth hurts too much. <laughs> Have you finally given in to 3D printing yet, or do you need another year? <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I am looking at, you know, 3D printing. I mean, I have somebody in my area who 3D prints uh, that is currently printing up a project for me that I will be um, filming and talking about soon enough. Uh, he's not in any rush. I am not in any rush for him to get the project done. So, um, you know, whenever he's done it, it'll be ready. Uh, everybody on the Discord, when I asked about a certain thing about Eldari, yeah, that, that, that's, that should give you an idea of what I'm talking about. For anybody who... the pin uh, I'm gonna leave about uh, I don't know about a centimeter I suppose cut take uh, this odd cut yeah I kind of wish I could show you guys on camera like how it pinches the end you can kind of see it in the camera see how it gets bright there that's that little lip where the, the the two halves of the cutter meet and it pinches the metal and so you want to knock that down because that can create a slight problem when you're gluing the pin in. for a moment glue what I like to do is burp it or putting the cap back on just so that I don't have that much dry uh, CA glue in the tip and the nozzle next time I use it you can hear goes away Dry for a moment. Clear for that cap. Okay. 
pretty much done with the drilling for the moment. We're not gonna, don't think we're going to get to the big fight with this today. Pins look a little uneven. And in fact, you can see how like the angle, like they're not par parallel. <laughs> That's just because the way I drilled it and everything like that. I mean, I'm not too worried about it because I can always pit, uh, pinch the pins or, you know, align them better or anything like that. Later on, here over my desk. This old brush here. Let's use an old brush like a broom. Sweep that out. There we go. Okay, where am I in these comments here? Fire Drake. Testing to see if my knife can cut a piece of fruit by testing my finger. I won't make the mistake more than twice. <laughs> Fire Drake, yes, brother, come over to the 3D printing realm. Yeah, I mean, like, I've talked about it before. Like, you know, getting into 3D printing and everything like that. I mean, I'm, I, I want to. I want to get a printer, but I want, like, a larger format printer. Because I'm I'm not looking to print miniatures or even terrain for that matter. My aspirations are different, more prototyping, cosplay, you know what I mean, like that kind of stuff, right? So, all right, so we got them cleaned, got them pinned. CA glue. I guess we can figure out the base now. Let's figure out the base. What are we gonna do for the base? Plenty of material around here to make something like this. Oh, that's right. I have fork bits. Four things. Yeah, kind of like these things here. From like the kill team starter sets. Armor plates. Combat gauge. I guess we have these little bits. Actually, you know what? This little armor plate thing here. That's not bad. I can't remember what the hell these are from. I want to say these are from Morocco. Yeah, I think these are from the, the Kill Team Maroque. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go with that panel. What's this little door thing? Yeah, that one little extra little door thing here. It almost looks like the front of a, like a rhino hatch or something. Yeah, it's from Kill Team. Man, if you guys could see my office, my office is just a total mess. I think I'm going to use this bit. Too big. That's pretty big. I like it's got a different level to it though. That. You know what? Yeah, let's 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 play with it. Let's play with it. Let's play with it. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. That. Okay. Back in the box. Uh, -bum 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 -bum. Where the hell am I? Hardrick. I ended up buying a Mars 4 dip resin and just pre ordered the BDQ1 Pro. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I assume it's the name of a printer, but. Uh, Sophie, I can see Chris printing himself Warhammer weapons and sci-fi weapons such as an M41A pulse rifle from Aliens. I would 100% do that, Sophie. Yes, you are absolutely correct. And in fact, I would go one further, Sophie. I would get an Airsoft Thompson and print the cowling for, for the uh, pulse rifle and put that on an Airsoft uh, Thompson. And that, that would make my 
<laughs> yeah. Or if I had the resources for it, get an actual Thompson and put the actual cowling on it like they did in the movies and you know actually have a gun that fires. You know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Fire Drake. Uh, I looked at a lot of F FDM printers looking for the easiest one to use and not something to tinker with. Yeah, no, I, yeah. again, because I mean, like I have so much shit to go on the go right now. Like you know, I don't really, I have no, really no interest in tinkering with a printer and you know, it, 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 it does not excite me at all. Uh, <laughs> fire drink. Chris is totally going to print all our stuff. Eh, maybe. <laughs> all righty. So let's see. Can we, what can we dream up here? I kind of like, like, like this little bit here. Kind of like that on the base. He's already going to hang over. Well, he is going to already hang over. Maybe the whole thing could hang over. I'm not crazy, but it just kind of just. Like that, though. Hmm. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. This is the one. I see how this kind of almost kind of being kind of just kind of like half submerged. Right? Kind of thing, like it's just kind of peeking out of the ground. Maybe. Where is my fucking move? Let's let's start cutting up some shit. Get that texture right there. I like that. I like that texture right there. Hmm. Not a hundred percent there yet. Not a hundred percent there. Sorry, I'm just trying to think of what the hell I did with that thing. What else could we use? Oh, anyway. Fire Drake, if you're looking for a less known brand, it still has lots of features. Flying Bear make large FDM printers like 300 millimeter plus, but I believe you have to assemble. Yeah, the assembly part is not too concerning. But yeah. Sophie, 3D printing helmets from sci-fi and wargaming would be nice too. Oh yeah, that that's that is one that is one of the goals. Some helmets, armor, you know, weapons. One that I would, I've had my eye on, uh, is I, it's you don't really require an, an FDM printer for it, but the working tricorder. I'd like to do, I'd like to make a working tricorder with a proper LED screen in it and everything like that. I don't, I, I don't want to say make a real tricorder but I think I understand what you mean. Hmm. Hey, hold on, I gotta I gotta find some more.
Holy crap. And a whole bunch of bases. Okay. Apparently I got a whole bunch of bases. Wait. What do we got? I'm just looking for like, you know, kind of just doodads and stuff, right? Like just some shit to fill the base up with. Create some bubbles. No idea. Land Raider last cannon covering, you know, stuff like that. I'm standing on this tomb cover. Uh, sorry, I got halves of a chimera here. Hold on. Ooh, a Lehman Rust turret head. Is that big enough? <laughs> Just have him standing on a Lehman Rust turret. Why not, right? <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? Though? A Land Raider door here. Fun. Hmm. 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 Hatches as well. Hatch covers. Hmm. All sorts of doodads. Mm. Peter Last Cannon. <laughs> I'm just look. I'm just trying to like think of some texture, right? Like to throw on this base. I don't want to lean too heavily into you know like obviously the the age of the miniature. You know like the actual age of the. Like, I don't want to, you know, go in for a bunch of bits that were only around, you know, during the Rogue Trader, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not that big a stickler for this kind of thing. But. Scrap metal, maybe? Kind of makes sense. I had... Um, as cannon batteries. Things. Shit, now I just thought of it. What if... What if he, he looked like he had the little battery and he was recharging... can <laughs> I don't know I'm just I'm just figuring stuff out here kids figuring it out There's no plan There's no plan cabling things hmm ideas are forming like what what is this little guy doing where is he Where's the mech boy? You know? Search lamp. <laughs> I don't know. Rhino door. Mm. Yeah, we'll keep that out for now. Ooh, another cable. Now this is just this is just the first thing of bits I grabbed. Like this is not this is not extensive of, of my my bits box. I got enough bits to shake a stick at. Oh plus two, there was a whole bunch of bits in the new Necromunda, the um ridge hauler. It has like little tools and everything like that in it. It's really, really cool. A lot of the extra little bits of it. Yeah, one of those tiny cool pieces. 
Sorry, I keep looking at all my other stuff here. I mean, like, trying to visualize. Uh, I keep looking at this GW. Uh, basin kit. Uh, let's see. Let's see. What is, what is the solution already in here? See, that's why I don't really rule out a lot of times these kinds of this kind of thing. It's this box. See, it has the old 40k. See, yeah, here's the Lehman Rust turret right here. <laughs> oh, see, this is a little orc bomb. No, I actually, I'm actually kind of partial to this scrap pile here. Shit. I have, after I went through all this trouble of going through looking at the bits. Do I have have that bit? Shit, you know the skulls in here too. Freaking Lehman Rust are huge. What bit is that? Oh, for the stairs. Shit, man, I don't know. I like there's little skulls on it though. I don't even do the other skulls. Yeah, we're gonna go with um, we're gonna go with the the scrap metal, tin boy scrap metal. Why not, right? We're gonna do that. So we're gonna scrap making the base because you know why bother if the base is already done? I am gonna put all this bit back in here. Then watch, I'll scrap that idea, and I'll want up all these bits back, and it'll be like oh. <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> I already put it all away. Anyway, yeah, we're going to use one of these bases here. Yeah, it's got little skulls and everything all over it as well. It's kind of cool. Kind of handy. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Holy man, where am I? Fire Drake, the Neptune 4 Plus or Max are recommended metal pulleys and Wi-Fi and large print beds. The Neptune... Yeah, Fire Drake, feel free to send me links to some of these printers you're talking about. Just, like, email them to me or post them on the Discord or whatever. Uh, Sophie, 3D print the casing for the tricorder and get a cheap iPhone and combine them both. Wonder if that's possible. Oh, yeah. Well, anything's possible. That's actually not a terrible idea. Like, do a tricorder. Uh, I was thinking, like, they, they have LCD screens that are, like, really tiny. And you can program them. And like I had seen a tricorder and it was uh, a Raspberry Pi with one of those screens and a whole shit ton of LEDs in it. And it even had the uh, removable uh, medical scanning device, the little medical part of the tricorder. Yeah. So, yeah it, was kind of, it, was, it was cool. It was cool. I saw it and I was like, damn, I, I want that. I want a working tricorder. <laughs> For all my away missions. <laughs> For all the away missions I'm on. <laughs> Shit, I kind of like this barrel one too. Damn it! This barrel one's kind of cool too. Nah, screw it. We're gonna stay with this. We're gonna stay with the scrap pile. We're gonna stay with the scrap pile. I don't have to do anything. And I can just paint it up. It should work. Now the question becomes. Only the two parts, right? Because unfortunately, this this base pack does not come with instructions on how to put things together. But the bases all seem to like to be one or two parts, so you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Fire Drake, anything is possible. You're a pro, Chris. No need for store bought bases. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't care. Fun anyway. How does this fucking base blend? What? Oh, it plugs in. Okay. <laughs> I get it now. I get jokes. 
plugs in. That's it. Bang. Done. It's a base. You know what? Honestly, I'm I'm fine with that. Really? Yeah. Let me just go in here. That's a 40 base or 35, 32? Yeah, it's a 32. Do we want that? No. It is the 32. That's the base. We're, that, this is this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Screw it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Cleaning up the uh, little little nubs, noobs, noobs. mold lines <laughs> oh we're cleaning more mold lines Bardrick, you kit bashed the vase, won't you, Chris? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to use it as is, man. Like, no. I'm, it has all the elements that I want, other than a safe spot to make them stand. <laughs> I just realized, where am I going to make them stand? Oh, I guess I can make them stand right there. Because he's already pinned. And so all it is is I just got to drill where those pins go, and bang, he's, he'll, he'll sit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy. Good gravy. Yeah, because like I have like little girders like this and everything like that that I can make, but why take the time to do that when I can just glue this some bitch together and keep moving on? I'm just trying to think of like the orientation of like waking up in the this way from the other end, waking up in the this way. A little bit more visually interesting. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Okay. Let's get some glue in there then. Um, yeah, we'll score this up. They're good. Oh. oh. All this. Oh, it's a Botan. <laughs> Botan. 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 Some pickaxes here. And stuff. <laughs> I'm looking at. I was like, oh, there's some good doodads on here. <laughs> hey, this is some good shit here. <laughs> Okay, that's 
glued. Next is the pinet. And yeah, and you know what? I think we'll probably we'll probably call it at that point. Once I pinned it or I drilled it and put the color in. I'm digging I'm digging the base now. He he is it is the right vibe for this guy. Look at that. This is the right vibe. Scrap metal. I was thinking more like that, with the beam off to his left, or his right, I should say. Don't really think I want the beam right behind him. I don't think I want the beam right behind him. Off to the side, visually. Um, so, I guess I gotta get the drill bit back. Dang it. Oh, hold on. Um, no comments. Let's carry on. We'll keep carrying on. All right. So, let's get it sitting like that. Now, the one way, the one way I usually go about pinning this or like deciding where I'm going to put is I will have them attached obviously into the model and then I will apply a bit of pressure where the pin is and then I'll drill that and then you know check orientation and then drill the other one where the other foot is. If it's only one pin in the foot, then obviously you don't have to worry about one pin, but I did two because I wasn't too sure uh, what material I was mounting them to, right? More pins, the better, the, the more secure that the model will be. Um, you know, like you could double pin each foot so there's two pins in each foot and that would make the model very secure uh to whatever you're mounting it to right or should i do them this way so it looks like he's, he's hiding behind the beams <laughs> no that's crap <laughs> Fire Drake, I posted two links in the Discord. In general, I should have at you. My bad. No problem. No problem. Yeah, I think. Also, the other thing too is like when I'm looking at how I want to orient the model into a base, I look down the base through the center of the model and I try to line those two up because I don't like to have the model like off to one side, right? Or too far back or anything like that, right? Like I like central to the base I just kind of eyeball it so I want to check the orientation and make sure I'm doing it right here I think This we will drill all the way through. Oh, it's a little too far. Shit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See. Didn't account for how far back his heel was. You can see he's kind of standing on that lip where I put that pinhole. So I'm going to move his pinhole up a little. Probably about three, two, three millimeters. That is the basic gist of how he's going to go. I am going to leave it separate from the, the base. So I can paint him and the base separately. So we're going to have to move this hole. See that the pilot hole. Do, 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 do. Fire Drake. Yeah, it looks like he's up to no good. <laughs> so 
Perfect. Okay, so that's there. So now we got to get the other thing. Hold. I'm going to angle this pin back a bit. Now it might dislodge the glue. It's okay because we can always just re-glue it. So we'll do it fast and quick. And we'll get it parallel, nice and straight like that. <laughs> no fuss, no muss. Check. See, he came up. Uh, came up. Ah, uh, screw it. Again, the balloon is now kind of behind me. Pinned in place. I mean, he's loose. He's not whacking around. One pin's longer than the other, so that's why it's not sitting there as perfect. Let's just cut that pin down. Yeah. That's is that looking like a composition to you? I think it's kind of fun, no? Classic model, newer base. <laughs> oh, we didn't need that base. Okay, so put the drill away, thing away. All right, I think we're pretty much done for this point. Um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, staying up and playing this shit with me playing with toys at this late hour and, um, yeah. thank uh, all my patrons all my members thank you all for being your patrons and members if you want to um, help the channel click the links it's all in the description below yeah any other questions folks I'm gonna put this shit away you guys you guys type up a question right here Damn, I got a Valkyrie. Oh man, there's so many damn models to get to. So many. Yet, yeah, I'm really excited for this. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Yeah, so next, next episode, uh, when that is, I could not tell you. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work more on this guy. This guy's we're just gonna like like I said, this series of videos, this uh, painting something series. This is just gonna be to just keep me motivated to just kind of keep working on my projects. Uh, I know that's really what my getting projects done was about, but my getting projects one was a bit more focused. Whereas this one, I'm leaving kind of just up in the air, just when I have time because. Right now, as things are, it is kind of hard to um, actually sit down, concentrate on things of this nature for any length of time. So, yeah. Just because busy with other shit. Not a huge issue. It's just, you know, sit down, start getting into something, and it's like, oh, got to go. Okay, come back. Uh, oh, got to go again. Fire Drake, act airbrushing tips soon. What? Any airbrush tips soon? Um, sure. I mean, I really wasn't planning on using airbrush with this guy because I am going to use... I don't know if you caught it before, Fire Drake, or if you caught my Adepticon video, but this is the plan right here. Coat de arms. 
this stuff is you know akin to the classic games workshop paints and as the legends go this is you know as close to the old school gw paints that you can get and i picked up this whole range for a very fair price out of very, very pleased. If you can see here. Blood red. Like seeing it's the old, it's just like the old bottles. The GW paints. Very early ones. Ones that came in the big, you know, golden green box sets. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint this model with those paints. That's the plan. That's why I was kind of wondering about like, you know, doing metallics or anything like that. Like there are metallics in this set. And in fact, where is it? Like, um, uh, where is it? It's, it's like the purple and green. Yeah. Like enchanted green. It's the old metallic green. Uh, there is a old purple, enchanted blue is the old blue metallic. Where's the purple? Where the fuck is the purple? I don't see the purple. Amethyst purple? But anyway, yeah, so that's the plan. We're going to paint this model, this old school Rogue Trader era model with Rogue Trader era adjacent <laughs> paints. <laughs> I know it's, it's not, you know, it's not the same, but, you know, uh, fire drink. Oh yeah. I bought some of those paints, the out of the out of print paints. Uh, are these out of print? Code Arms? I thought Code Arms is still still going. I thought it was still a thing. I don't know. Maybe not. Either way, I scored the whole paint range for fairly cheap. <laughs> uh, I picked up the Myth of Silver, Emerald Green, and Amethyst Purple. Oh, cool. Yeah, the Purple Metallic is a game changer. <laughs> yeah, it, it was back in the day. Um, do you remember what paint set had the, the colored metallic? Purple? The Orc Eldar? Paint set? I think it might have been the Orc Eldar paint set that had the um, the metallics, the colored metallics. Expert had the inks. The first one, game color, was like the it was the, the primaries. Creature, I think, had a bunch of the leathers and stuff like that. I can't remember. There was what like what six, seven of those paint sets, but anyway. That's the plan. That is the plan. If this is the kind of thing that sounds interesting to you guys, let me know. Because, uh, you know, the more of you guys, you know, get fired up about this project, the more it'll fire me up, the more I'll get, get back to it. Uh, like I said, when the next episode of this will be, I have no idea. I'm just going to have to, you know, pay attention to the social medias, the Discord, or my YouTube channel, whatever, and get updated. Um, fire drink. I meant the GW out of print. Oh yeah, yeah, the GW out of paint print paints. Yeah, I still have like a few of my old bottles of like, my GW old GW. I mean, I had to rewrite the labels, but I mean, like orange ink, snake bite leather. Like that's the old snake bite leather there. That these are the old GW colors. These these were from the paint sets. It's just they're so used that um, you know the labels came off. <laughs> I, I even keep uh where is it i even keep yeah some of the um some of the classic hexagon ones just for nostalgia <laughs> just for the nostalgia anyway all right i think we are done done holy man look at my hair i look like chong over here oh man whoa Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Call the profits. Good night, Chris. Good night. Fire drink. Veteran paint bottles. They've seen some things. Oh, yeah. They've seen things. Things were seen. I know. There's there's so much paint. And, like, when I came back from Adepticon, man, I was, like, very fired up. I wanted to, because, like, I wanted to do this project, this little feller, right, with the coat to arm paints because, you know, I acquired the whole set. And I also want to get to some painting with my airbrush 
because I got the, uh, oh, shit, I don't have that camera on anymore. Um, I've got the Stano Res Metallic Primers, Metal, Bronze, Copper, Gold. These are all primers. These are the Stano Res Primers. Picked up these. Also got the big honking 16-ounce bottles. 16-ounce or 14-ounce? 16-ounce. Gloss black, so I'm I'm set for gloss black for a bit. I also have gray and white. Turbo Turbo Dork was kindly enough to send me uh, away with some paints, so I grabbed a, a like a sample pack of like primary colors. I definitely want to you know give these a try because these have been reformulated, and they're way different than the previous bottles. Like these things are huge, they're big bottles. Also want to do some painting with these paints. Um, it's a basic primary set of the new Atom paints done by um, Big Ammo. These paints looking looking very interesting. Very very excited. Give these paints a try. So. I also scored two brushes as well, airbrushes. But anyway, <laughs> fire drink, nice haul. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a bad haul. Uh, I was really pleased with my coat to arms acquire, acquiring. There was other stuff too. I, I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, I got like a couple tornadoes. I want to I want to do up a whole Christmas tree with all these little gobos. So I already have the other two. I've got this guy now. This one's an older one. I think this one is like 19, 20. When did this one come out? 21. This came with 21. Yeah. Got this fella. Little crew, little crew duder. And this guy. Matt, I, I want to do this guy. I think I'm going to do him uh, in chrome. Just because he, the model's obviously all metal. <laughs> anyway, when they said their new paints are the best, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they said their new paints are the best, yeah, new paints are always the best paints. <laughs> always, it's all that's always the case. If it's a brand new paint line, it's the best. There is what I, there's, I think there's two new paint lines I saw. One was Micromark, they're doing an acrylic paint line, and who else just put out a paint line? Somebody else just put out a paint line. <sighs> I can't think of it. I can't think of who else. But yeah, I know Micromark just did a paint line. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. See you in the next one where we're going to... I might prime the model off camera. I might not. Either way, stay tuned. Duncan? No, Duncan already has a paint line. It was it was another another company doing a new paint line. I just saw it the other day. I was like, another paint line? Like all these paint lines. Anyway, yeah. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's go back to bed. Go to bed. I guess if it's really late for you, go to bed. If it's really early for you, well, get your day started. Get the fuck out of bed and get your day started. <laughs> Don't be lazy. Get out of bed. Get to work. Paint something.